dream. <laughs> Hello. Can you tell I'm new? Yeah. I don't think it shows anybody on here. I wonder if I could turn on my phone so I can see stuff better. It says you're live. There you are. Yeah, I can see that. But I think if I have my phone up too, I might be able to do something. I don't even know. Okay, I'm still learning this. If anybody pops in here and watches this after, hello. Hold on one second. Let me try to see if I can get it on. This also says one watching. I know it's my mother. The thing is, I have no idea how to use StreamYard. I don't know how to invite guests. I don't know how to like share a screen. I've seen other people do that. I would like to know. Hey, sweetie, how are you doing? This is my first official live, kind of. So thank you for popping in. So uh, let me tell you what this, what um, these are about. It's going to be. So um, I, I'm really into the paranormal. My mother and I, who's sitting here with me, uh, she's my best support. But we um, belong to a paranormal group for like, I don't know, since uh, like 15 years or so. It might be even longer. I think Amy has been born 17 years at least. Yeah. 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 So anyways, um, and uh, I could see spirit and communicate with them. So I kind of like to hear other people's stories. We all have something to share. To us. So, so that's kind of what this channel is about, just so we can share each other's stories. And then if you guys have questions, maybe I can answer some from my experience that you had. Just that I can't invite anybody up here until I figure out how to. I know they send people a link, but where do you get that link? <laughs> so if anybody's listening and you like to write it in the comments, please do. I, I'm kind of clueless. So the whole point is to try to get people to come in here to see if somebody will help me. And then we can talk about our personal experiences. And it doesn't matter what it is because it's a judgment free zone. Oh, hey, Lift Lock. How you doing, sweetie? That's okay. I'm glad you popped in, honey. And when I can figure out how to make you a mod, I'll make you a mod so you can post your channel. And I would do it for you, but I don't know how. I'm still learning. I know you're kind of learning too, but I know you know more than me. I don't even know how to get guests on here. And I tried watching a couple YouTube videos and I'm just like, I need some actual people to tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see if I can highlight this. I'm trying to see if there's a way for me to put your channel up there, but I don't really know how. I know if I highlight the comments that to put them up here. See, I have used StreamYard like a couple times because on Facebook I sell Color Street, but all I do is show my nails and talk about them, you know? So I don't know how to do any of the rest of this stuff. That's what I need to learn to do. Do any of you guys have paranormal experiences? I think most of us have. We talked about, I mean, we could talk about sometimes some of the cool places we went to. Some places we investigated. Hey, Heather, how are you doing? How are you? Do you know how StreamYard works? <laughs> I know how to do this. That's about, oh, hey, Joy, how are you? Thank you for coming. I was just saying, I don't know how the hell to get this StreamYard to work. I know. As much as I did by putting, you know, Heather's little comment up there. And Joy, she's a sweetie too. But I really want my channel to be um, about our paranormal experiences. And then once this gets going a little bit, I'm going to invite guests to come in. Lift Lock wants to know, are you on stream? Right? You're just a chat whore. <laughs> I am too. I love chatting. Sometimes I kind of like some of the smaller, um, the smaller chats so they don't have so many people. So then that way it's smaller, like a little community and everybody gets to really chat with each other. Yeah. I know Lip Lock, you've been learning also. Does somebody know how to like, 
how do you share your link? So then eventually I can get guests on here. So I'm not just talking to myself. I did try to go live um, like a week or so ago. It was like one in the morning and I was literally the only one on. Yeah, see, I prefer small groups too. It's it's more intimate. And when they get too big, I have anxiety, so I, I'm really antsy. That's why I keep seeing me move a lot. And my mother watched one of my videos. She's like, you say um a lot. I said, I know it's anxiety. So you're like, um, um. And plus I have adult ADD, so I'm going to wiggle around a lot anyways. Since you have to copy and paste. I have to copy and paste. Oh, I didn't see that. See, you miss a lot of comments on here. You have to. Oh, okay. Now I see it. You have to copy and paste the link. So if I did, let me try that. See, it's a good thing you're on here. But on the, yes, I'm on the desktop. I'm on my desktop. That's why the camera is not as, as good, I don't think, as my phone. Let me try that. Okay, that, that's what it is. So if anybody wanted to come up, they could. If not, at least I know how to do it now. So I just copied the link on the top. Oh, yeah, that's right. Everything is opposite. Copy the link on the top here and just copy and pasted it. Oh, good to know. That was so simple. No, that was me. I did that. Oh, you did that? Go to three dots beside my name and see if I go to, if my channel comes up. Okay, hold on. Yep, three dots. Oh, no, it says put user in timeout or block user. No, I'm not going to do that. So how how do I guys, if I wanted to make any guys a mod, how do I make you guys a mod? And then you can post your own links to your channels. I'm not going to be a true crime channel, so I don't think there will be as much drama here. I mean, I am a pagan, so people are going to assume I'm a devil worshiper, but I'm not. So somebody might give me crap for that. I, I pinky promise. I don't believe in that stuff. Heather said she loves your dimple. Would you ignore that? Thank you. No, I can't see all the chats. Do I have to keep scrolling down? And maybe, it maybe there's a delay on here. Is that why you guys have, like, two devices going on at the same time? Like, the actual YouTube... And then the, because I'm using StreamYard, and then the StreamYard so you can see everything. You'll have to do it after the stream ends because you can't do it from StreamYard. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I, that's why I'm saying, like, I've seen other people do it while they're live, but I think they use their phone. I'll figure it all out. I have to pay attention better to those videos. Like, I started making on Canva a beginning, you know, to play from the beginning. You know how they have like a countdown or whatever to let them know that it's getting ready to start the live. I don't know how to put that up either. So I got to do more research. So if you want to be a guest, let me know. We all have a paranormal experience. I don't know anybody that doesn't. Well, no, some people say they don't believe in it, but my husband used to not believe in it. So he used to, first he was going to like once in a while, he'll come to an investigation with us and he'd say, I'm only coming so I can laugh at you guys, you know? And then um, he got scared once and now he believes, but he used to not believe at all. He would make fun of me constantly saying this stuff isn't true and all this stuff, but now he believes. He believes when his spirit ran past him and uh, um, he was he was in an old garage, remember, in, was it uh, Beacons Falls? Beacons Falls. Yeah, somebody ran by him in a, in a garage that was used for storage. Scared the crap, crap out of him. He walked back into the house where we were, and he's, like, telling us how something went whooshing right by him, and he saw it and felt it go by him, and it scared the crap out of him. So ever since then, he was a believer. And one time he was just, he was pushed, but I don't think so. Could have been. He could. It was at the Green Lady Cemetery. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that he insisted. I don't think so. <laughs> Never know. Oh, thank you. 
I probably would have loved your sister, Lip Lock, if she's anything like you. I don't think I'm seeing all the chat, though. So let me see if I can get this on my phone. See, this is my over to 40 glasses. You know, in the eyesight, everything breaks down after over 40. Lip Lock, I think you like my mama that's here. My mom's an awesome lady. I think I gave her all her gray hair she has, but she's an awesome lady. So if I hit the live. Yeah, let me try to see. Oh, that. no. Stop it. Okay. See, we've all had experiences. Sometimes people don't understand them because they fear them. So um, um, they kind of close themselves off so they don't see them. You know, I don't see faces very well. I'm, I'm afraid of seeing faces because of the experiences I had when I was a kid. So faces scare me. So if I see spirit, you know, usually their face is blurred. And I have to try to use my third eye to try to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying before in the other live I was doing, just so you guys know. All right. So just to put some rumors to rest, you know how you, sometimes people say, oh, that fake, that, that psychic was fake, which there is a bunch of fake ones out there. You know, and it was like they were fishing for information. And the reason why it seems like that, so if they'll say, I have a name that begins with a D or I see a motorcycle. And what happens is um, your guides give you flashes or images or the spirit does on the other side. So it's like a bloop, a little flash. And then you're left to stuck and put all these pieces to the puzzle together and they're confusing. So sometimes we're trying to, figure out what we're even seeing, you know? So that's why sometimes people word it the way they do. It's because it's not like um, a full TV screen where it shows you a movie. It's just a flash or an image where you hear a name or, or something that sounds like that name, you know? So I just want to explain that to you. So you guys don't think everybody is, is, uh, is all fake. And that's the reason why they do that because we're human and we only know, so much, you know. Have a good day, Lip Lock. I, oh, hey, Tiffany. How are you, sweetie? Oh, hey, Blue Bell. How are you? How are you guys doing? You, my house of 74. Hold on. Let me put this on here so I can see it good. My old lady uh, glasses. So I don't have to put them on. My house is 75 years old, and I'm next to a, a bunch of oil ponies. I live where all the oil workers lived, and when they came out in the oil booms in the 50s, I always hear music and country music. It's crazy. Yes, you will. And um, oh, shit, that, the name just slipped my mind. Um, when it's it's like, all right, so we live, we leave energy prints everywhere we go. So that was a major energy print at that time. So it's not like they're still reliving it. It's just a replay over and over again. That's what it sounds like to me anyways. So somebody will say, seems like at 10 o'clock every night, I see some lady walking by the stairways. And that's, that's their energy imprint they left there. That doesn't mean they're physically there, if that makes sense. But that's a very cool story. Thank you for sharing that. You guys are all awesome. I'm going to make a couple of you guys mods so you guys can post your uh, channels and stuff on there. But I don't know how to do it yet. Oh, I wonder if I can do it from my phone, huh? Well, not make you guys mods, but see if I can at least post your channel. Who has a channel in here? I know Lip Lock does, but she might have left already. Let's see. Oh, see, see me trying to see my chat on my phone. <laughs> do any you guys have cool stories hey tiffany do you have a cool story the share let me see if i can look oh there's lip lock go to channel all right i'm gonna try to uh copy go back and see if i can post her page so you guys can Sub to her. 
Oh, I didn't, I didn't say who's posed. So the link I just posted is lip locks. I forgot to write down her name. I seen ghost hunters once and, um, at the theater that we go to the theater, we go to at the theater in our town, they, they went there. So we went to go see them. Actually, that theater is haunted that's in my town and across the street. There's a, they made a movie on it. Worst movie ever, but um, we investigate a couple times of a place called Yankee Peddler. You guys can look it up in St. Torrington, Connecticut. We investigated that place a couple of times. Well, a film crew came and made a low budget film. So we were invited to the premiere to, to when they premiered the, the movie before they put it out and stuff. It was horrible. It's horrible. And it, they were saying, you know, how it's based on a true story. Like the storyline was kind of true, but anything that happened in that movie was not even remotely close. Jam has a question at the bottom. You have a question? I have a lot of stories. What kind of stories are you wanting? Oh, any kind. I don't, I, it's a judgment free zone. So we all have different experiences. Did you want me to send you the link? You want to come up here and tell me about it? I'll send you the link. If you feel like coming up, you can come up. It doesn't matter what kind it is. Good, bad, crazy, abducted by aliens. I don't care. Dad tap dancing. Dad tap dancing? Oh, yeah, your dad tap dancing in the, in the house. I'm going to post a link, Joy Jam. If you want to come up, you can. So, um, let, let oh, I have to hit send it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> send works. I've bleached my hair too many times. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, quite a few years ago, right after my grandfather passed, I don't think he, he recently had passed, and they were getting ready to sell his house. And he was only passed away like three to five months at this time. So we went there just to do an investigation and to see what we pick up. Probably some of the best audio we've ever gotten. We got in, um, um, him something saying about us girls. He, was a, he thought he was a ladies' man. And um, we got him tap dancing. My husband said, because my grandfather built the house that they're getting ready to sell. And my husband had said, um, I like your house or something to that effect. And he said, um, thank you very much. And it was very clear because listening to audio, sometimes it's not clear. And it sounds kind of like mumble. But this was very clear, just sounded like a whisper. And you could, the whole time during the audio, audio he must have watched a lot of TV because it sounded like there was a TV playing in the background. It was an empty apartment. There was nothing in there. <laughs> I haven't been abducted by aliens either. <laughs> um, Heather. Oh, let me post this. Um, we have a haunted hotel in Bakersfield in uh, the Madre Hotel. Teresa Caputo stayed there when she was here in Buck owns Crystal Palace. They believe it's haunted. Our Pioneer Village Museum. Have you gone there to check it out? Yeah, so sometimes when we go into people's houses, um, we we wouldn't always find anything. And it's not that it wasn't there wasn't a spirit there. They just happened not to be there at that moment. So think about it. If you're passed away and um and if a loved one comes and visits you, that doesn't mean they're staring at your residence. I mean they're they're free to roam free. So they're gonna go pop in to be nosy to other people and check them out. So they come and go as they please. Oh, let me cheat. That's right. I got to leave my phone here so I can see all your chats. I keep missing them. Yeah, but Heather, did you ever go to that house? Um, Lip Lock says, I have paranormal stories almost all with through about my deceased sister. She had loads of experience and I've had a few. I would like to hear them sometime. I said it in my first live when I was talking by myself because I was the only one in there, how the very first spirit that I remember seeing was my aunt the night she passed away. But she was gold color hanging from the roof saying, help me. The ceiling, not the roof. I was babysitting. Yes, I was babysitting and I was 10. My mama went to the bar. 
a snitch on her. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, that wasn't uncommon. Like, the, these weren't the only, I was 10, but I was a really mature 10. I didn't give my mother hell until I hit puberty. Yeah. So back then, it wasn't uncommon. My very first paid babysitting job, it was 10 years old over the summer. And that was like 40 years ago. And let me tell you, I got like paid $50 a week. That was a lot of money back then. Joy crawling, you read it. Yeah, it says my bunch has my bunch has been here since 1830. Y'all might not want to hear about it. Oh, I do want to hear about it. You can I posted my link up above. You can pop right in if you want to talk. Y'all don't be shy here. It's really intimidating to talk about your paranormal stories because you don't want people to think you're crazy. But who cares? Nobody here is gonna judge you. And I remember growing up, because my father was a Baptist minister. He's a pedophile. But anyways, my father was a Baptist minister. And we truly were taught all the time that seeing spirit was a devil. It was devil's work. Well, God gave us that gift to see is the way I see it. And I think more people are more enlightened now than they used to be. Some of them are angels. Yes. Yeah. And so I think a lot of it is fear as what it is. But not every, I mean, if your mother had passed away and she'd come to visit you, it's not the devil playing tricks on you. But that's how I was taught when I was little. So then for a while, when I was a preteen anyway, so for a while I didn't see spirit because I was afraid. But I was still always curious. That's why I really got into the paranormal investigating is because I had questions I wanted answers to. So I'm glad, you know, times have changed and people are more open-minded. And somebody will say, I have a spirit in my house. And I'm thinking, you know, well, sometimes I'll repeat it. Yeah, you probably do if you think about it. Our land is old. Um, people have walked on the land before we were ever here. Uh, you know, of course, there's going to be something in your home, you know. Even if it's a brand new home just built, that land isn't brand new. So Heather said, let me see. Oh, Joy has one too. I'll post that in a minute. When my niece was a teenage, she stopped coming to my house and staying the night because my house I used to live in had paranormal activity. What kind of paranormal activity? Was it just spirits? Were things moving around? Because it does freak people out. I'm from Arkansas. I give everyone hell. My kids go nuts with me sometimes. Yep, this fool my mother married was a pedophile. Been there, done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's it's it sucks. And then, oh, let me tell you, this has no do with paranormal, but let me tell you what happened. It's unfortunate that sometimes people don't listen to children. So when I was like 14 or 15, I tried to tell on my father. Because I did get into trouble. So I ended up having to move with him for a couple of years. Well, so I went to go tell on him. And I did. I ran away. Um, somebody brought me to the police department. And I told everything that was going on. And they're like, oh, he's a sick man. Blah, blah, blah. You know what happened? When my father showed up. And they went in the other room and questioned him. The cop came back in and told me I was a sick little girl. And that he said he used to do that. But now he's a born again Christian. And he doesn't do that stuff anymore. So shame on me for trying to get in something, get him in trouble for something he did when I was real little. Isn't that horrible? Oh, lip lock is in the background. Hi, sweetie. I don't know how long you were there. My phone was blocking it. I just this Hi, second beautiful. popped up. Hi. <laughs> I was walking out the door to go run those errands, and I and I had my phone running with you on it, and I thought. Oh, well, shit. Why well, sounds more fun than running errands? <laughs> and, I, and I have a story that I would tell before I run errands, if that's okay. I would love to hear it. Let me get my camera. Let me get a little more centered here. What's okay? I'm kind of off center here. Hey, that's and I'm in the dark. <laughs> I don't have good lighting, honey. I, you know, I put in extra lighting just so you can see me this much because it's really dark in my house. That's a little bit better. And yes, I do look is. like an old hag. No, you're beautiful. <laughs> oh, how are you? 
I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's so good to see you on a live. It's nice to see you. I love watching you. I love you. You're just so sweet and you talk and then you're like, now excuse me while I curse. And then those F-bombs start <laughs> flying and that just it cracks me up every time. <laughs> you I used to not do the... I used to not do the excuse me before I cursed, okay. but now I try to just in case, you know, but yeah, but I've got a story that I would share. Yeah. Hold on one second. I wanted to, I asked Heather a question. I just want to post it up here so I can read it real quick. Oh, yeah. And I'd love to hear your story. I had a three okay. bedroom house, um, son in one room, daughter in the other room. And, and a man, the ex slept with in the living room because he, we felt like we couldn't breathe, especially when the door was shut on its own. Oh, Heather, I want you to come up after so you can talk to me more about it. But thank you for sharing. I want to hear your story too there. Thank you, Lip Lock. You're welcome. Should, so, I, should I tell my story? Oh, start sharing. I, I want to hear. Okay. Very first one I can remember in our lives. It's the mid 1950s and I'm uh, about four years old and that would make my sister 15. And we live in the country in Arkansas out in the hills and hollers at the time in a two story house that was built sometime around or during the Civil War. So um, let's see. All right. The day during the day, uh, let's see, back then what we had was radio, AM yep. radio. And oh, my sister oh, liked, you know, uh, rock and roll music, Elvis Presley and, and Buddy Holly and all that. So we had the radio on quite often. Our dad had passed away and our mother had had to go to work. So she was at work and all throughout the day, all of a sudden on the radio, there would be this strange, um, Oh, I'm getting goose. I just got goosebumps. <laughs> I haven't told this story in forever. Okay. It wasn't like a voice, but it, it wasn't regular radio static. And if you were, familiar with radio, which is different now than it was then, but the normal radio static, you, you knew that sound, this was different. And it kind of kept creeping my sister out and she would keep adjusting the tuning knob. Uh, and it would go away and then it would come back. Okay. This kept happening throughout the day. So, Mother worked two jobs. She worked as a waitress during the daytime and she worked in a commercial laundry of an evening. So we were home out in the country pretty much, you know, up until, oh, maybe midnight or so. Well, I'm not ignoring you. My husband just came into a door and he wants some chicken that's in the fridge behind me. <laughs> so right, you're, that's I'm cool, sorry. honey. I'll just keep, shall I just keep telling the story? I keep telling the story. I can hear you. I'm literally like one foot away. Okay, I'm going to just keep going with the story then. Uh, I'm not that good of a storyteller, but I'll relate it as best as I can. Okay, so um, to kind of set this up as well, uh, finally my sister gets to the point that uh, she doesn't want to freak me out because I'm a little kid, but she's kind of starting to freak out. Uh, and so she just turns the radio off and decides we're going to go outside. We'll just go spin the, you know, go outside and play house and whatnot. So, okay, then nightfall comes. And by this time, my two older brothers are home. Uh, one is her twin brother, who obviously would also be around 15. And then our older brother, who would have been about 17. And uh, mother had bought... Uh, back then, they called them a divan. It was a sofa, but what you did was is you raised up the part that you sat on, and it had a hinge that would undo, and you'd bring it back down, and it folded out into a bed. Yeah, and, it was like the old wooden ones, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I seen that. When I was a kid, I haven't seen one in many, many, many years. Yep. Okay. Well, it was summer, and of course, being out in the now where we lived, 
we did have electricity, but we didn't have running water or natural gas or propane or uh, we had an outhouse, a two-holer. We were uptown. Yeah. <laughs> but we did have electricity, obviously. But uh, but we didn't have fans and we didn't have air conditioning and it was summertime. Now, uh, to lay a little bit of foundation about what's about to transpire, which I actually did see. <laughs> okay. My legal name, first name, I was named after my father's best friend. And he, on the day I was born, was killed in a car accident and decapitated. Am I getting too? No, no, get, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this was when I was born. Okay. On that, on that particular day. All right. Now, and he was my dad's best friend. Okay. So come back up to the divan and it's dark and uh, it's time to go to bed. And because it was summer and it was hot, we had a screen door with one of those little uh, hook latches with the eye. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So we had the wood door open uh, to the front porch and had windows open uh, with screens to get the air flowing through. That was AC back in the day, open the windows. <laughs> that was our AC. So, and we're sleeping or we're laying down. We're not asleep. Sissy and I have laid down. Uh, it's hard for me to tell you how things are, but there's a door right with your head towards the door so that the breeze is going to come as close to your face yeah. as you can get it. Okay. So we see what, what in real life would uh, you would have thought was like uh, headlights going down the highway and you'll see the headlights pass across your wall mm -hmm. through the open door or the window. But the headlights didn't keep passing. They pulled into our, uh, I guess you'd call it a driveway. It was a dirt where you pulled around the big old oak tree <laughs> yeah. where my yeah. swing was. Uh, but anyway, no, it wasn't the tree with my swing on it. Wrong. Yeah, that was a different oak tree. But it's one of them just dirt. Okay, Arkansas dirt. All right. Yeah. And pulled up to where it looked like the headlights were coming through the front door. So Sissy thinks, oh, it's Mama and she's home early. You know, because yeah. that time for me would have been, it's dark, it's time to go to bed. Yes. Yeah. We didn't have TV or anything, you know, so it's just radio. Yeah. So it gets dark, uh, housework's done, all chores done, it's time to go to bed. So I have no way to tell you actually what time it was, but I can tell you that my 15 year old sister's reaction was, is mama is home early. Hmm. Oh. But she didn't, we didn't get up. We just laid there. And Sissy reached up and around where she could reach and just flipped with her finger and flipped that hook. Yeah. And the eye on the screen door so Mother could walk in. The headlights go off. We hear footsteps on the, it was like two or three little wooden steps up onto yeah. a old, now honey, I'm just talking, an old wood porch like yeah. you'd see. Okay. And you hear like the several steps. The yeah. Yeah. And you hear the several steps come across the porch. I'm getting goosebumps again. And knock. And sis and I both like turn our heads the way we would to look at that door. And sissy's about to say to mama, the door's unlocked, you know. Why are you knocking? And what we saw was the silhouette of a headless man. Oh, wow. Not real, not a real man. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Iris. I, I haven't told this story in years, so it's it it scared us, but it didn't terrify us. Because we knew it was our daddy's best friend 
-hmm. And our daddy had died about six months before. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Okay. And I mean, it scared us, but I don't know how to put it. It was scary, but we weren't necessarily terrified. Yeah. Because my sister... And this is why I put in your chat, my sister would have loved you. She would have been here, honey. She'd tell you stories. She had so many experiences of people. And people might think I'm crazy, but oh, well, if they do, they do. Yep. But my sister had a number of experiences of loved ones very near after their death coming to visit her. Yes. And other than that night, and to, to finish out that story, sister kind of jumped up, kind of startled like, and it vanished and the headlights vanished. And it was just gone. Oh, wow. And we never heard that static on the radio ever again. Oh, so they were coming just to say hi in a frightening kind of way, but it wasn't, you know. You know. I don't think he meant to scare us. No, no. Something tells me I don't know enough about paranormal activity to be able to like analyze what that what might have been going on there. But my heart tells me that I'm, I, I keep trying. I almost say his name and I don't want to because it's my name. <laughs> my OK, no, no, don't don't talk to yourself. <laughs> but, but, um, him having been my daddy's best friend. Daddy had died six months before the apparition, if that's what it's called. He was decapitated in a car accident. The headlights are involved. To my way of thinking, it was the only way he knew to come to us. Yes. Yeah. And as gently as he could with and without this, he couldn't speak. Yeah. Uh, here again, to my way of thinking. So we had the static on the radio to kind of get our senses kind of tingling yeah. in a manner that we know something's coming or, or if something comes, you're not like, Oh my, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, and it was really neat, <laughs> but kind of scary. And That's very scary. But, so, so do you think? Oh, well, for one, um, the static on the radios a lot of times it's easier for them to communicate through the the frequency waves and the waves from the radio. It's easier for them to try to come through and try to be able to communicate. So that might have been how he built up the energy. Actually, might have been through the radio. But do you think that? So you says you said your sister was gifted and was able to be able to see and do things when she got older. Do you think that you didn't only because that frightened you enough to close you off? Do you know what I'm saying? Like that might have, because being gifted is actually, well, anybody can be gifted, but it's really hereditary down the family line. So if sister is, I'm sure some else in your family was, and you probably are too, but you shut it off out of fear because you're afraid to see something like that again. Well, the few, uh, you know, I mentioned in my chat, I've had a few experiences and the first couple of times uh, were unsettling and scary. And it was one of those where I felt like it was OK. First, there would be like a four or five foot tall pillar of white kind mm -hmm. of a mist hovering a little bit above the floor of this apartment I was living in on the second floor. And there was always a really weird smell coming from the apartment below, like a weird cooking smell that I could never put my finger on. It may or may have nothing to do with it. Okay. Yeah. But, and I thought I was having some vision. I do have vision problems now, but I'm talking about 30. I'm talking about back in the early eighties. So quite yeah. some time ago. And um, like I would be in the kitchen and like out of the corner of my eye, this quite as best as I can describe it, a pillar of mist 
that would be maybe the size of um, me. I'm four foot 11 yep, and, so I weigh 110, and I weigh 110 pounds. So about my size. Okay. And, but I would see it out of the corner of my eye and it would come out of the hallway and move past. But when I would turn to look, it wouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah. Then I've never told anybody this. Okay. Then there would be these little black, like I'm like I'm watching TV. I'm sitting up and or like I am right now, and I'd look over at the floor, and for a, just a second there'd be like this black, almost like there would be a tarantula, but it's not a tarantula. This yeah. little like a black thing that just would zoom. Like I don't know. I can't describe it. I feel weird I trying to. Else, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know what these things are? No, I don't know what they are. I just said I know what other, I, you're talking about. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I've seen those about things too, and I've heard of other people seeing them. Um, and people have different versions of what they are. I don't think people assume that every time you see a, a dark, something dark or a shadow or something small and black running, that it's bad. It might be their way of building up energy. It's not always bad. It, it could have been, and it could have been. That's why you've seen the white light is because they're letting you know that they're there to protect you. But just so you know, too, when you see spirit and it's only white, it's it's because, um, well, that's how I see spirit. Usually you see it like almost like kind of like a mist. I can't really describe it. And then my third eye sees the rest of the details, if that makes sense. I can see him clearly I when I was younger, but when I got older, it's more like a mist. So I could say... I see, you know, your Uncle Henry standing behind you, and this is a message he has for you. Do I see him? Yes, I see him, but I see him as a shadow or like a mist, and the third eye gives me the rest, Does that, if that makes sense. Can so you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sweetie. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yes, I can hear you, honey. I, live long, I wasn't I live ignoring long. you. I just didn't want, I didn't want to interrupt her. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure I could be heard. Huh? You know, and, and I've talked plenty. I'll say if you're going to do this again, I'll save other stories for another time. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I plan on this is what my channel is going to be about. Just okay, sharing well, stuff. I would love to come back another time Absolutely. if that's cool with Anytime. you. Anytime. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave you running on one of my devices so you get the watch hours. That's important. Oh, thank right. you. Thank you. I'm okay. sorry I interrupted so you. You didn't no, no, sweetheart, you are perfectly fine. I'm going to step down and I'm going to listen on my phone while I run my errands and leave you running on the PC so you get watch hours. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, this was cool. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, so Jennifer, how are you? Good. Okay. How are you? Uh oh, I lost her. Let me put my link back up so you can come back on. I don't know what happened. Copy, paste. Can you still hear me? I didn't turn that part on. All right. This off, it might be too much on the Wi Fi. I don't know what's going oh, on. I don't usually have a problem. Off. Did you just pop this in? Well, yeah, I did. I don't usually have That's a problem. That's I was trying to tell you. Somebody's saying hello. Oh, yeah. I, po I popped it up here. See? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. Good. You can hear me. You can see me, too. All right. Oh, good. Jam's back up here. Do I have to add her back up to the stream? Yes, I do. Add the stream. Sorry about that. I'm still a little new. I, got, I freaked out. Everything went blank for a minute. Hey, lady, I'm new, too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I had a quick story. Okay, I can't great. talk long because i got to get kids off the bus. Oh, I get it. Um, I will tell you, have you heard of visitation dreams? Yes, absolutely. I have had I, my daughter passed away 23 years ago. Oh, wow. And I've had several visitation dreams over the years. I haven't in the past few years. 
Okay. But they're so vivid. And of so course, because it's true. They're, yeah, they're, it's true. They are so unbelievably real. One, her name was Savannah. Oh, beautiful and, name. And she was 13. But one dream, I'm climbing these rocks, these like steps, and I'm walking up these steps and I come to this amazing white building with, with windows everywhere. And I'm thinking, um, you know, what in the world is this building? And I, and I walk in and there sits my daughter and she's sitting at a desk and she says, and she says, mom, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. And, um, hold on a second, please. Okay. I'm so sorry. No, don't. Don't apologize. Thank you guys for everything. Until she comes back. Um, will you guys please? I'm back. Like I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Can you guys um, like and subscribe to my channel if you're new, please? It'll help me. No. Okay. Now, when I walked into the building, there was my daughter. And I, she said, what are you doing here, mom? And we walked. She said, well, since you're here, I'm just going to show you around. And we started to walk down the hallway of this white building. And then it was just over. But it's just as that was like probably 10 years ago, I had that dream. And I can remember it so vividly to this day as if it happened yesterday. And another yep. one, I was walking like in a strip mall. <laughs> <laughs> And I had to go to the bathroom. It's so crazy because I read that they insert themselves in your dream. Yes. Like, yep. And so I, I kind of studied on it because I had so many of them. My first one was with my grandfather. Yes. He was standing in the middle of my yard and I just hugged him. And I remember hugging him and saying, I can smell you. I can Aww. smell you. Mm -hmm. And I, it was weird, you know? And then with Savannah, when I was at the strip mall, I walked, I had to pee. And I was going to this place. And it was seemed like it was a bar. There was loud music and lights. And there was a young girl standing there at like one of the trash cans they would put outside of a bar. And she turned around and it was Savannah. Oh. And, she, and I said, what are you doing here, baby? And she said, I just wanted to tell you hi. And she, oh. she hugged me and I just like, I never wanted it to end. I know. I want to cry with you. <laughs> So oh, sorry. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. A lot of times I think we dream them because it's it's not as intimidating or as scary. So a lot of people say, Oh, I wish I can see my loved one. I'm like, dream about them, sweetie. They come to you. They do. They come to you. They stay, they, they still visit. I wait for my mom, but she hasn't yet. But but oh. Savannah has and um, my grandfather has. Oh. And I know it was real because grand my grandfather died. Two weeks before my 32 year old son was born. Oh, so man. I remember it so vividly, you know, it, was, yes. it felt like a spring day in my dream. I, I could see colors. And your you know, dreams, those dream. dreams are your memories too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't I, think I just that, want... that is your truth. That is your truth. Thank you for letting me share that. I will tell you one more little story and then I'll go. But I oh, I love to hear it. Year old. Hold on a sec, okay? <laughs> Hi, guys. For the ones who are still sticking around listening, thank you very much for supporting me. I probably missed half y'all's chat. I'm not good about paying attention and looking at the chat because then I feel like I'm being rude. So I try to glance, but I miss a lot. Oh, Bonnie, I would like to hear them. If you're still on here, you can take the link or you'll have another time. We can just have a whole slot time for you. I would love to hear them. And I would make you a mask. You can post your link your, for your page, but I don't know how, but I could probably do it from here. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm back. <laughs> oh, don't apologize. Don't, don't apologize. One more we thing and then I'll let you go. And this is what happened. Maybe you can help me with this. I was in the Dollar General one day, many yes. years ago. But about, probably about four years after my daughter passed away. And her name was Savannah, you know that. Yes. So 
I'm walking around and I see this little Hispanic girl. Now, there was no reason for me to notice her. You know, I just noticed her. She kept drawing my attention. So I'm standing in the line to leave, to pay for my things. And she's right behind me with her mom. And she looks up at me and she says, I'm going to my brother's birthday party. I got him these gifts. And I said, well, that's really sweet of you. I mean, she started talking to me like she knew me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> her mom's standing there and I'm thinking, I don't want to make her mom uncomfortable. She doesn't even know me. So I just kind of, and she kept talking and talking. And then I get to pay for my stuff. And this little girl walks up to me and she puts a, a necklace of plastic beads in front of me. And she said, this is for you. And I said, well, that's really sweet. And I looked at her mom and her mom just shook her head. Yes. You know, and I looked down at the beads and I said, well, those are lovely beads, sweetie. I said, you need to tell me what your name is. So I know who I can say who gave me these lovely beads. Aww. And she looked up at me and said, my name is Savannah. Yeah. And I feel so like, you, I so it sounds like your daughter was, Communicating through here because through her is a connection to give you that message of saying hi. Yeah, I think so. Don't you? Yes. Yeah. I told her mom I wouldn't. I'm a big crybaby, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it no, just, it's fine. It just blew my mind. I was just, I was like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. Because after you have beautiful experiences, that's a gift. A lot of gift. A lot my more, mom a lot of had, that. had the gift a little bit, but I kind of push it away. Oh. Those are beautiful experiences. Yeah, they they were great. And I really, hey, listen, thank you for letting me on here and to tell that. I don't Absolutely, know. Anytime, I'll be anytime. back. And if I'm not, I think I am subscribed, so, but I'll check. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. Thank you for sharing um, those stories. They're beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me to. You have a wonderful day. You have a wonderful day, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, Miss Bonnie. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you, Iris? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'll stick up here as long as I can. I'm waiting on a phone call because Wednesday I'm doing a live on a missing person. I'm expecting a phone call. So, Ooh. But I do have stories. I do have stories. Yes. And I'll start with the most recent one. Okay. Last July, August, somewhere in that area. Okay, let me go back my birth parents divorced after right after i was born not long after i was born yeah. right went and married different people so they i had on my mother's side i had a half brother and then on my birth father's side i have three half sisters <coughs> so last july august something like that I was looking through, oh, I have several email accounts, and I had was looking for my medical records, a link that I can get into my medical records. And I came across a weird email. It was from my half-brother's wife. Hmm. But before that, I was dreaming. I had a dream in July, in July or August, I had a dream from my birth father. Not my mother. Not my mother that had my brother. It was my birth father. And he I could see him just as plain as day, like he was holding up a an old home phone, you know. Yeah. Not a cell phone, a phone. Leaving me a message because he couldn't get a hold of me. Because you weren't paying attention. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> but I didn't call to him. Usually if I call to them, they'll come to me in my dreams. Yeah. But he was leaving me a message. He s said, I'll get back with her. I'll get back with her. Like he was leaving me a voice message, right? Oh. So then the next day or so, I was looking through my emails and I came across this mess email and it was from my sister-in-law letting me know that my half brother passed away. Oh, and my birth father did not know my half brother. That doesn't all. mean he didn't come through on the other side to let right. them know to get through the message. Yep. Right. Wow. Because my birth mother and my adopted dad do not come through to me. And oh, I wow. think 
I think I know why. Because, really? Well, that's a story. For that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that's because beautiful. of what they were into. Yeah. It was because of things they were into. Yeah. 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 That's that's just one. After my the now see my maternal grandparents, my grandmother, my grandfather were raising me. And after my grandmother passed away, now this was nineteen eighty eight. Yeah. That was back during the era of VCRs. Yes. Mm -hmm. My favorite movie was Jumpin' Jack Flash at that time. <laughs> yep. so, so when she passed away, I watched like the first night I was at my husband, my ex-husband's job mm -hmm. because I couldn't stop crying. Right. Then the next night I started watching Jumpin' Jack Flash, but it could only make it through about 30 minutes. I finally got so tired from crying that I fell asleep. No. Then the next night was the view first first night of the viewing. We come home from the viewing and the VCR kicked on. And wow. I'm like, I didn't touch the remote. My kids were like, I didn't touch the remote. <laughs> My ex husband didn't touch the remote. It just turned on by itself. Oh. Yeah. And my ex-husband was like, yeah, that's her trying to tell you to stop crying. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. And then after that, after that, now, my grandmother didn't care for my ex-husband. Yeah. So I would get a feeling that I was being tapped in the back like this. And I'd turn around and there'd be nobody there. And that went on for from 1988 till probably 1997 and that was it until you paid attention <laughs> it was until i got a divorce from my ex-husband oh. and married my new husband okay that she yeah. stopped i don't get this anymore yeah mm -mm. yeah no wow. now this missing person case that i'm working on i'm gonna be talking about on my live on wednesday night Oh, I'm going to make sure I tune in. What time? 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay, good. 7 Central, 6 Mountain. I'm Eastern. Five Pacific. Okay. I always do that. Well, I'm gonna, while you're talking, I'm going to post your link so people can subscribe to you. Bonnie's absolutely yeah. awesome. And I will make sure my mods post your link as well. This Thank Wednesday you, is going to be, it's going to be. It's going to be a doozy. Yeah. What, did you connect with the, the missing case? Is that what it is? Or are you going to try to? I want to say I did. Okay. But looking looking back, I'm not really sure that I was doing it correctly. It was with the dousing rods at that time. Okay. So, it's a very controversial case. But while I was doing that, right, I have Apple products. Meaning I have S-I-R-I. I'm not going to say the word because it yep. anger it. And I was talking to my husband. And it just popped up on my phone. Hey! I'm like, I didn't think quick enough to pick my phone up and get a screenshot. Oh. I'm thinking it was the person. No, yeah. I, yeah. And then, like, a little bit after that, like, I don't know, maybe a week or so after that, mm -hmm. on my iPad, popped up. What's up? And I'm like. Oh, wow. So I just mentioned the person's name. And I said, what do you want to talk to me about? Yeah. <laughs> so, Did yeah. you ever try meditating to see if you can get messages in that way? I usually pass out when I try to meditate. That's okay if you pass out. I tell people all the time, you still get the messages across. So mm -hmm. even if you don't visually remember it, your mind will remember it, you know? Right. Or at least part of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know because every people are like, if you meditate, I always fall asleep. Go ahead, fall asleep. Your subconscious still tells you what you yeah. need to hear. I usually do that Yeah. on my, right before my lives on Saturday night, I'll sit here at my table because if I go to bed to take a nap, I'm going to be in bed for four or five hours. 
Yeah. So yeah. I do it here, like, you know, give myself like an hour or so. Yeah, you yeah. need to because you need to ground I yourself too before you do all those readings. That's a lot of energy coming through one after another. Last Saturday was 50 readings. The Saturday before that was 64. That was the most I've done. That, I'm sorry. My mom was showing me a message. What was that? I'm sorry. Your last number? Fifth, last, fifth, last Saturday was 50 readings. The Saturday before that was the highest I've done yet is 64. Dang. How many hours are you end up being live? The one I did 64 on, I think I was on like five hours, at least five hours. Dang. Yeah, because I remember I was watching you live and then I don't know, remember if I went to sleep or not or what. But then the next day I hear that you're on Heidi's live. Was it Heidi's or Shorty's? Heidi's live? It's, there's no telling. I've been, I've been. Peeing and I'm like, been... damn, that was pretty late. So by the time she got on there, that had been super late. But you guys are up to like four in the morning or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, dang, these girls are up all night. Yeah, yeah was I've like, been hopping. <laughs> oh, wow. I was like, dang, they just, I, I was surprised that you went on there afterwards. I'm like, you had to have been drained. I don't know. Well, sometimes when I do a lot of readings, I got really energized afterwards. And then yes. I crash. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. After my Saturday night lives, I'm like really energized. Yeah, you're I wired. Can't to, I cannot go straight to Yeah. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And then when you crash, you crash. Did you end up sleeping late? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, I didn't get up till like noon. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, you also stayed up all night, too. <laughs> yeah. Got to bed about four because I can't remember. I, we were piano hopping. I don't remember I, who's piano us. Yeah. I see the parts that she was. I'm not a lot on on Sundays because of church and stuff. So I miss a lot. And it was our holiday. So I had to go in early, too. So. I, I miss a lot on some days. But I seen I seen clips when I popped on that Heidi was showing clips of you guys' live yeah. and just cracking up. I'm like, oh my God, oh, they're yeah. having a blast. They're gonna have an absolute blast. Oh yeah. I'm trying That's to think awesome. if I have any other stories. Uh I can tell you here where I live at, it's a we're at, it's like a huge um, I'm trying to think of a word for it. Do you know what a stockyard is? No. I've heard of it. It's a great big barn. I mean, it's a huge barn. Yeah. This barn was built in the 1800s, the first time. Ooh. And okay. it burned down in the late 1800s. Yeah. And, of course, you know, people lost their life in that Ooh, fire. So there's, yeah. So you my got a lot of energy has, around My there. husband has better gifts than I do. Oh, really? Because he's seen a he's seen a cowboy in full cowboy getup in the barn and it has talked to him. Yes. Really? Oh, that's because awesome. what they did was they rebuilt the barn in the 1930s. Now yeah. it's made out of metal. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My husband. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's very he, cool. He doesn't like having the gifts. He doesn't like it because he says if he keeps himself open, they just continuously talk to him. So they will. You do have to learn to shut yourself yes. on and turn it on. He and had off to learn to can. shut himself off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have really bad anxiety. So, and I figured out what some of the anxiety is. Not all of it. I just have natural anxiety. So one time I went into Walmart. And I'm, I'm in there and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm not having no anxiety in the store. When I'm in checkout, all of a sudden, um, everything, because when I start seeing spirit, it kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. Everything looks the same, but a tad bit blurry, if that makes sense. I, I can't even describe it. But anyways, all of a sudden I started feeling really, really, really horribly anxious. And I turned around and looked behind me where the aisle was, you know, with the, where I'm standing in a checkout. And mm -hmm. every single person that I can see that's in my vicinity, I can see spirit all standing right behind them. Right. And I'm like, well, damn, that explains why my anxiety just shot through the roof. Yeah. And then the lady at the checkout, I see her, I'm assuming it was her mother, which then I'm trying not to cry at the, at the checkout because the lady standing behind her, which I think it was her mom was saying, isn't my daughter beautiful? She needs to know that she's beautiful. And I'm just right. like, I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> 
But then I'm like, all right, that explains why I have anxiety sometimes when I go out in public. It's because of all that that energy around. That happened many years ago. I mean, it's what happens is over time, due to all the chemicals that the government and everybody puts in our drinking water yep. and all the chemicals that's in the food, it calcifies the pineal gland. Yep. Yeah. And I that's what's happened to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure mine's calcified. So yeah. I've been I've been I'm I watch Sloan Bella a lot. I don't I've never heard of Sloan, Sloan Bella. Bella. Oh, she's on YouTube. You might want to watch her. Oh, Sloan Bella. I'm saying it yes. in my head a few times I can remember it. Or I'll just go back in here and rewatch it. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's got many videos on reading she's done. Really? Oh, oh good. I'll people. Oh, yeah. Mostly celebrities that she's read. She did do a video on Summer Wells. Oh, did she? Oh, good. I'll have to check it out. Yes. I'll have to check it out. I know because some people say like psychics are fake. The information they got is wrong. And I don't think so. I think yeah. some of it is really um, they they get their vision or whatever it is that they got. And then they have to put that piece of the puzzle together. So that's what makes sense to them. So it's not like their vision is wrong. They just might not be able to put the piece in together. Right. And sometimes after the fact, you're like, oh, now that makes sense. That's why I said this, you know. Well, what I did was I, I learned from Sloan Bella. Yeah. And one of the things she said that helps open you up, open yeah. this up, is Moldavite. Yes. So yep. I went and got this. Oh, oh, beautiful. Nice polish piece. I've never seen the polish piece before. Yeah. And then I've got a piece. <clears throat> you got to be careful with Moldavite. I've got a piece inside this. Nice. That I keep on me at all times. And I've noticed. A big difference. I noticed. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm catching more things. I'm not really, not necessarily seeing spirits or hearing them. Yeah. But I'm seeing more like numbers. Okay. Yeah. Putting together numbers and other things. I but carry yeah, around labyrinth for that because that um that helps what psychic abilities that helps open up your chakras. Yes. I love labyrinth. It's my favorite. Still, I make jewelry, so I make I have so much labyrinth. It's not even funny. You mean oh this. wow, nice piece. Yes, I've got three of them. <laughs> do you? I have. I have a lot. Trust me. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I keep a lot of black obsidian, uh, black mm -hmm. tourmaline, mm -hmm. and um onyx when i'm Ooh. doing my readings mm -hmm. you'll see yeah. the black the black term the black obsidian on my table and um the black tourmaline is on my table and then i wear the black onyx yes on my well i keep a um it looks like an old lunch style you know what the hell do you call that old-fashioned lunch the basket Thing. But anyways, I keep what, so if I go somewhere and do readings, um, go to the psychic fairs, I have my box already with, I have a few different tarot cards, Oracle, I have a case of tarot cards. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed, but. I got three boxes. Yeah. See, I, I, have them, I don't boxes. even use, I just thought they were yes. cool and bought them. And then, you know, oh, look at, wait, look, I have to show you, where is it on my table? I just bought this and I haven't used it yet. It has two different decks in it. It's called As Above, So Below. Oh, nice. And and oh, they have one like side it. has a regular tarot. <laughs> yeah, and one side has a regular tarot. And the other side, instead of having the, I think it might be for more spiritual. So inside this one, it's um, it has, instead of, you know, the wands, the pentacles, coins, and all that, it'll say earth, air, fire, water. Right. And they have all those different kinds of symbolisms in it. So if that's you look really back, cool. I can't remember which one of my lives I showed. Um, I've got the Kings of Gaia Tarot, and it Ooh. has symbols. It has triangles. One's water, one's earth. Yes, one's upright, one's down. And oh, then for the, the one, symbols, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then one's triangles upright with a line through it, and one's yeah. down with a line through it. I have a question for you. 
Okay, so I we just got finished teaching a tarot class. And this year, because the time before that, I did it by myself. So this year, the other reverend did it so we can tag team with each other. Right. Because, you know, the cards have a basic meaning. And then your intuition or whatever is your version of what that card means. So we put right. them two together. So she was saying when it came to wands that that's air. And I'm like, no, that's fire. That's fire. Yeah, it's fire. And she's like, so we had a debate on it, not an argument, but she was like, well, this is the reason why I think it's air. So that means for her, the swords is fire. And to me, the swords is air. So, but not, but we both said like, listen, to me, it's fire. To her, it's mm -hmm. air. If it means air to her, that's, that's her message. We can't tell her that she's wrong. Right. That's what she truly believes. And so that's okay because we all read differently. So I was just curious what your view was on that. Yeah. So it's fire for you too. Yep. Say with me. Wands is fire. Wands is fire. Swords yep. is air. Air. Yep. Pentacles is earth. Earth. Yeah. And cups, cups is, is water. Water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's why most of the cup cards you'll see water in there. Or you see them in the other suits too because it, it has to do with emotion. Cups. So the Cups is can Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Earth is Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Fire is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And which one did I miss? Air. Aries is Gemini. Air is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Nice. You know what? I'm just, isn't this horrible? So I don't really know anything about any of that stuff. So we have a ministerial student that's about to have a class and I'm like, I'm taking your class. Isn't that horrible? Like I'm her reverend, like, you know, and I'm like, I'm taking a class. I can learn about astrology. I know very, very little. And I've been saying for a few years, I keep saying there's something missing. There's something missing. And then she knows astrology. I'm like, you really should teach a class on this. I'm not, and it hits me. I'm like, holy hell. Like that's what I'm missing, you know? And I'm like, how did yeah. I not? Because our mentors before in our church has been there way before I've ever started. You know, nobody knew astrology. It just wasn't yeah. what they taught from, what, from you know, whoever. So I never learned it. So now that she's going to teach a class, I'm going to take the class with her. You know, and so I can learn a few things. <laughs> Complete guide to tarot and astrology. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yep. Amazon. Right. <laughs> So we have a guy that um, belongs to who does actually he's come to church this week to speak. Um, he belongs to the OTO. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like a spinoff of the Golden Dawn. Don't but, know um, that either. You don't know what the Golden Dawn is? You never see those conspiracy movies about the Illuminati and stuff. And they think that, you know, whatever. Well, that the stuff is real. <laughs> yeah, it is real. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm not going to, you know. That's the guy, but one of the guys I know belongs to Golden Dawn is a um he's in the Senate from for Vermont. But anyways, um this guy does um they do Gnostic Mass. I went to one once. It kind of creeped me out a little bit, and I didn't really understand even what they're doing. But anyways, he comes to our church to do talks, and he reads tarot, and he does. Um, I've done his workshops when the tarot is based on the um the tree of life, the Kabbalan tree of life. Uh, and I'm like, that's very interesting. So he relates his cards to that, but I don't really know right. too much about that either. I don't either. I don't either. And he's like so smart. Well, he's a lawyer. This guy's a lawyer. Oh. So he's so smart. It makes you feel stupid, but you know, he belongs to the OTO. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but they do mm -hmm. things like call the Gnostic mass. Actually, they, they worship the Virgin Mary. All right, so this is going to sound strange. So they worship the Virgin Mary, and then, um, but they follow some of Aleister Crowley's work, but on his early days before he went crazy. So that's what his talk is going to be this week, actually. So I'm kind of excited. I have the same deck. <laughs> I said I've got many decks. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't used them all. Yeah, yeah. I went. Oh, you know, when you go into a shop and you get drawn, I get drawn. Yes. To the yep. tarot cards, right? Yeah. 
and I got drawn to this one deck. And I'm not going to show it on your video because I don't want you to get. Okay. Because it is a nasty card. Oh. I didn't realize it. I brought the deck home. I, I mean, I, I was drawn to it. I don't know why. Yeah. I opened it up and there is one card. I don't remember which one it is. Yeah. And it's a man giving another man. Um, and I'm like, I can't put that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody one day, you're going to have to read them that deck. You got that for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> I did. But it's not going to be on YouTube because I'm going to No, no, probably not. <laughs> what, Mama? Oh, God, I can't once. believe I yeah, grabbed that. Oh, a deck. whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've got three great, big, gigantic boxes of tarot cards and oracle cards. Oh, wow. How mm -hmm. long have you been reading tarot for? From the oh, God. Uh, somebody else asked me that. And I said, it's probably been okay. roughly 20 one, years. One, one, four, four, yeah. Four. It's probably oh, well. been roughly 20 years. So, actually, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really understand this. So, um, at our church, we do, you know call in you know like the archangels and stuff but i don't really know that all that much well except for like the archangel stuff but i know that you call in like say angel numbers i have no idea what that means angel no. numbers is a message uh okay so a number comes in pops into my head yeah and i'm like i've got i just started members on my on my channel and the thing i'm offering my members is daily angel number yes so what i do is i look at a person's name and a number pops in my head i write it down you know i write it down so i don't forget it because i got so many members now yeah and what they do is you put that in your search engine you okay. type in angel number and that whatever number i give you and that's a message from your angels that they want you to know for that day okay because i was wondering i'm like well, how do they know what the message is just by the number? You have to go to your search engine and type in angel number and the number I give you. Oh, okay. No, good to know. I was a little confused, but that's what I'm saying. So even though like we kind of have the same spiritual belief, but doesn't mean you know, what I might have learned from my end of the country basically is what it is. Right. It's what you learn around here and what you learned over there is it's going to be a little bit different, you know? Right. But no, I've I didn't. been all over the country. Have you? Yeah. Well, I live in Connecticut, so um, oh, well, really I'm know about. Side. I'm in Wyoming. Yeah. I mean, so I've we only know done. the same group, you know. So the East I've Coast, when we get together for yet. festivals. and Well, I grew up in Pennsylvania. Oh, did you? Yes. My ex-husband worked for CSX Railroad, and we transferred to Jacksonville, Florida. So 33 years I spent in Pennsylvania. 25 plus years I spent in Jacksonville, Florida. I spent a year in Chattanooga, Tennessee, went back to Florida for three months, and then moved here to Wyoming. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so my my very first paranormal investigation I ever went to, because actually my stepfather had started it with a group, and then my mom took it over for him, and then my mother and I did it with our group. But anyways, um, my very first paranormal investigation was in Pennsylvania. And of course, your first one, you'll never forget. It was the first time I ever seen a black shadow, which scared the living crap out of me. I had no idea what it was. And that, that one did really creep me out, though. I do not think it was good. And it was outside. But anyways, um, I heard um, they said that some people claim that they could see, you know, hear Native American drummings out in a distance. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, OK, whatever. So I'm out in the back of the yard. You know, just walking by, and you can hear distinctively, boom, 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 yeah. boom. Yeah. And I'm like, am I hearing stuff? Like, I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, holy crap, that's true. I thought it was just a story. But, yep, those, that was my very, very first paranormal investigation I ever went to. And well, if you want to take a vacation, and it'll be a beautiful vacation. Yeah. And do your paranormal at the same time, I highly recommend St. Augustine, Florida. St. Augustine, Florida? Really? St. Augustine, Florida. Yeah, the oldest city in the United States. 
Oh, oh, so that was a lot of history there. One of my places oh, I want to go to yeah. is, um, uh, uh, what the hell is it? Uh, New Orleans, New Orleans. You'll like St. Augustine. They have literally, they have walking ghost tours. Oh, really? St. Augustine. Yes. Oh. You have a person that goes with you. Yeah. You walk around the town because they have multiple cemeteries in the yeah. town. And they will, will you, they'll get to a cemetery and they'll talk to you about that particular cemetery. Oh, that's very cool. There is the first school there. You can take a tour of the fir very first school that's in St. Augustine. Oh, very cool. Oh yeah, it's yeah. It's, oh, that's yeah. cool. My our, husband our, and I honeymooned there. <laughs> did you really? Oh no, that is yes. awesome. So our church um, is an old schoolhouse that was built in the eighteen hundreds. Tiny little white. I think my um, I have a video on in bulk on there, and and the very end has a picture of our church. Has a little staple on. Well, actually, staple wasn't there. That was built in the nineties. But anyway, so people say, oh, it's haunted, or like we built it in the nineties. But anyhow, <laughs> so. So there's a little old schoolhouse here. That's our church that that's haunted. It used to be part of the Underground Railroad, and um, and and then when it rains out, you can hear this guy out in the front, out the front door because he was letting the school children in, and he got struck by lightning. So and when it rains, mm -hmm. and you can always hear him out there, always. And you can, if you're in your church, a lot of times people like will get their hair touched or their shirts tugged, or like, oh, it's the kids, right? You know. So they right. do have our, as our church is like one of the most haunted places. So creep people try all the time are trying to come in there and we're like, it's not haunted. It's sacred. You know, like it's, it's not like that. Right. You know, but people all the time, now, like, oh, there's no investigation there. And we're like, no, no. Mm -mm. Now I will say I do have, I mean, we're all born with psychic abilities. Yes. Yep. We're all born with them. I didn't realize it when I was younger. When I was 13 or 14, I had this. Hi, everybody guy. that just came in. I'm not ignoring you. I have trouble watching and seeing chat at the same time. I know. I have a bill I ADD. I can't pay attention. <laughs> I'm sorry for interrupting. I was, I was probably about 13 or 14. My grandmother had to learn how to drive. So she learned how to drive. My dog would not listen. She would not come in the house when she was called. So we let her out to run loose while we went somewhere. Yeah. And when we come back, my grandmother had to have her park in the, back in the car into the garage. Well, as she is back in the, the garage, she accidentally hit the dog because the dog oh, got no. up under the tire. Yeah. Well, my grandmother's like, yeah, she's going off to die. And, you know, being a little kid, I'm like That's crying and I'm like, no, yeah. she, she's not dead. She's not dead. She's coming back. She's coming back. Right. So I went mm -hmm. to bed that night and she, my grandmother woke me up the next morning and said, she's on the porch. You knew. You knew. I knew. Yeah. yeah. And then more recently, I'll say roughly within the last two to four years. The person my husband works for has a little dog. Yes. He's a little, little Australian shepherd. He had like four or five dogs at one time, right? And he let the dogs out early in the morning because he was going in to take a shower and get ready to go to work. And he let them out to go potty. And he lives way out, you know, and it's like farm country up here. Yeah. Well, he gets gets dressed, gets ready to go to work, calls the dogs back in. Well, the little one didn't come back in. Well, you know, up here you've got owls and coyotes yes. and all that kind of stuff. And he called my husband. He says, I think I think an owl or a coyote got the dog. I said, oh. the dog's not dead. The dog is not dead. And at that time, I had a friend that could read small animals. Mm-hmm. And I contacted her because that was as much as I could tell was that he wasn't dead. I just didn't know anything beyond that. Yes, so I yeah. contacted a friend of mine and she said, send me a picture of the dog. So I sent her a picture of the dog. She got back with me. She said, the dog will be with a white dually pickup truck and wire fence. You'll see wire fence. 
I'm like, okay. So like the fourth day he was missing, we went out, out there because he lives like almost about an hour's drive away from yeah. where we're at. We went out there and we were going door to door to see if anybody had seen the dog. He gets a phone call because he had the dog had a call, uh, tag on him with the phone yeah. number. He gets a call, call from one of the guys that he buys hay from. Guy says, are you missing our dog? He said, yeah. He says, well, I think I got him. So these are all dirt roads, keep in mind. So we're going up the dirt road. We make this turn on this, I mean, really tiny dirt road down in where he's been hay, you know, cutting hay and getting ready to bale it. And this man that my husband works for is not a believer. Yeah. I'm hoping my grandson put his uh his mask on his head. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, it's not a mask, day, it's a game thing. I don't know. Yeah. That day. I'm trying to get him to stay away so he doesn't get doxxed. All right, I'm sorry, go on. Oh yeah. That day that man became a believer because when we pulled in. He stopped the truck before we got all the way down in where the guy was at. Yeah. Because the guy owns a white dually pickup truck and there was wire fence there. Oh, that yes. is awesome. So we went a little deeper. Yeah. I asked my friend, can you tell me what happened? She said, take a picture of the dog's eyes. So my husband had the dog in the back seat of the truck with, you know, because of the back seat in the truck. And he had the dog in the back with him. So he snapped a picture of his eyes and I sent him to her. Somebody had came along, a man or a woman had come along, seen the dog and picked it up and took it. Oh. And it managed, he managed to get away from them. And he had been running his little legs off for a few days he was home. so tired by the time we found him all he wanted to do was sleep mm -hmm. oh, i have a cool story to share with that so it's kind of a two-parter so i have a friend um i almost said her name but i have a friend who um who has a bunch of shepherds and i had i had one of my dogs had he in the passing away but a dog we had many many years ago ended up having a tumor in her belly that was the size of a half a watermelon and she was pretty thin too so the way she was shaped and the way the tumor went like you couldn't even tell the only reason why we found out she had a tumor was a fluke um our dog was a jerk and didn't like other shepherds actually and was trying to go out the window and broke the window and cut his paw so uh -huh. by mistake um they felt that his, the, her stomach was tight so they gave us an ultrasound and said that you know she had a tumor there so it was a good thing she ended up cutting her arm so we ended up giving her surgery and they said it was cancerous and they couldn't tell if she had a week to live or six months to live and we could give the dog chemo but it's all it's going to do is prolong it the inevitable whatever so a friend of mine, she's um she is so good with dogs. She she heals them and everything else. So she said, let me put my hands on her to see if if I can try healing her, you know, see what I can do. So she did her thing, and my dog lived for many, many years afterwards, never got sick again. Never got sick again. And I'm like, you healed my dog. You healed my dog. So I always call her the dog whisperer. <laughs> But then she, um, <laughs> but the second part of the story was, so one of her shepherds, she's very close to her dogs and one of her shepherds got spooked and took off. And while she was out hiking somewhere, but anyways, got spooked and took off. And she, she was trying not to leave that area because, you know, her dog took off. Well, after right. a few hours searching, she had no choice. She was crying and went home, but she knew the dog wasn't dead. She's like, I know the dog's right. fine. I know the dog's out there. Um, she was, you know, lighting candles, doing whatever, asking everybody to please, you know, keep an eye out, put out all these flyers. I am not exaggerating you. It was about four or five months later. She got a call saying her dog was, I forgot how many miles away. It was nowhere close by where we live. Was out there at a cemetery, at the same cemetery that her father was buried in. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. And I'm like, what is the chance of that happening? She said the yeah. dog was so sickly and skinny and shaking and stuff, but she got her baby back and it was many miles away. She's like, only thing I can think of is that somebody picked up the dog and the dog took off. So but right. she doesn't know where, but it was many miles away. They found the dog. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was quite a few years ago, but I don't, I don't know. This is strange how those stories happen, you know, oh, but that yeah. was cool. that's cool. That's very cool. Oh, yeah. So I call her the dog whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I remember, okay, I'm a Reiki master and I've um, done faith healing. So she's like, you know, no, why don't you heal it? Why don't you heal it? But I'm like, my energy is, for one, it's my animal. So I am more connected, but I'm also right. more anxious and scared and, you know, so you're more calm and more connected and grounded. So she did it. And, oh, she's good. She's good, good. Right. I have a friend here on YouTube. She does tarot readings. Yeah. And uh, she did um, biofeedback and aligned my chakras. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She hasn't been on very much, but she's been moving. I don't know what's going on with her. I haven't messaged her or anything. Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't like, I, you know, I know her, but I don't know her that well. I met her through Sloan Bella, actually, because what she did was she was doing readings and she did a reading on, I think it was astrology readings. Oh, and really? She re was reading on Leo's. Mm hmm. And she read that somebody was going to suffer a loss. And that same day, Sloane Bella lost her son. And <gasps> Sloane's a Leo. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Sloane is very outspoken about the celebrities. Really? Being involved in, oh, <laughs> Some horrible yeah. stuff. Probably some of the same and stuff. I've probably some of the stuff I've heard, anyways. I'm gonna have to definitely look her up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. I see that I just popped in. Oh yeah. And thank you. Oh, Tony, oh, yeah. thank you. Like, share. Well, I was on. Say. I was actually on. I was actually on uh, Heidi's channel, and somebody came in and said you were live and had lip lock on. So that's why I hopped over here because Heidi was just checking. She got her super chats and her super stickers. Good. I'm so happy for her. Stuff. Yeah, she worked hard and for she that. Wasn't sure, she wasn't sure if it was working or not, so I sent her a $1.99 super chat. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Just to let her know that, yes, she, yeah, it's, it's working. working. <laughs> good, good, good. And then somebody came in and said, you were live. And I'm like, oh, I got to go find her. And I'm <laughs> typing it in my iPad, and I'm like, I can't remember the last name. I had to go on my phone. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for popping in here. Thank you, everybody that's oh, came no in. Problem. I know. I so oh yeah, just like Tony said, like share and subscribe. It's hard to yes. tell when to go live because you don't really want to go live when you have other people you like watching being live too, because everybody wants to yeah. support each other. So it's hard to well, find time to go live. Before I even got in with Heidi and everybody, I had yeah. already scheduled my lives. I've been going live at 8 o'clock on Saturdays, Eastern. Yeah. And then I started picking up and going live also on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock, but nice. not doing tarot readings. Oh, like I, okay. I, want, I really wanted to talk about missing person cases on Wednesdays. Oh, that's and, awesome. And like last Wednesday, I ended up doing the dowsing rods. Oh. That's not going to happen again. You know, and, you I know what I keep happening? Like my sage. Yeah. To, to keep cleansing to them. Cleanse my rods. And what happened was from lighting it so much, I developed allergies after I got older. Yeah. And I got up the next morning, my eyes were watering so bad and my nose was running so bad. I had to one Benadryl and sat here and fell asleep. So I, I don't know if this will help you because, like I said, we all have different ways. But I right. usually light a, a cleansing candle. So if I'm doing readings, I'll just take the cards and go over the candle because some places where I go, I can't burn sage in between readings and stuff. Right. So if they allow me to light a candle, if not, I still got my crystals there. So, but I'll like 
put the, you know, cleanse it over the candle smoke and let the smoke take it where it needs to go, you know? So I don't know maybe if that would help you. So you're not trying to breathe all that stuff in, you yeah, know? Yeah, because I am in an RV, as you can see. Yeah. So it's going to be more smaller compact. Yeah. And sage is no joke. That stuff is strong. That stuff is strong. And it's been proven also to like kill mosquitoes. It's a good bug, not kill, but it's a good yeah, bug it's repellent. It's supposed to be something else. Uh, I can't remember. Antibiotic or something? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. And then, see, I've always told it's toxic. So then I've been hearing, you know, some Native Americans drink it as tea. I'm like, are you using white sages tea? Because I heard that was toxic. So I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I have a Native American that comes here once a year. Yeah. And his wife sages their house every day. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. They clean it. Okay. Day. So I just made this video. So I'm like, people are going to interpret this the wrong way. So I just made a video like Sage is a band aid. <laughs> <laughs> not that it doesn't work. I mean, obviously, I use it. I'm a witch. How am I not going to use Sage? You know? Yeah. So I do use it to cleanse my house. But that's not cleaning and cleansing your house. So fully get right. rid of everything. You need more than just sage. So right. if you've got a lot of ick in your house, you just whip some, some sage around. That's not going to do it. You know, but yeah. you do use sage to kind of cleanse your space and, and whatever. But mm -hmm. so I'm like thinking afterwards, especially since I get really nervous when I talk. So I go, I, uh, um, and I don't speak clearly, I think. I don't know. So I'm like, people are going to think I'm like talking you know, bad or talking crap about it, but I really wasn't. Sage is important, right. but you just can't yeah. go whipping sage around thinking this is a fix-all. It's a little yeah. more heavy duty than that, you know? Yes. I mean, you can use bells, singing yes. bells, mm -hmm. and then there's other herbs that you can burn. Yes. Let me tell you about this one. Let me tell you about this one. So how, how much do you know about the Summer Wells case? Um, I've been watching it since the a couple weeks after she passed away. So I've watched quite a bit, okay. but not like every little thing. So you remember the fake medium Raven? No, mm -mm. no. Transgender came down after Juanita. Okay. So I heard something about it, but I didn't really, I didn't, I don't know anything really about it. Okay. So this person Raven is on Facebook. He's not on YouTube. And I was watching him. He has a page on Facebook. I was watching him, right? And he would do, he's, he's a social media influencer. Anyhow. So if I seen them, I probably also, just didn't pay attention. <laughs> he's also a scammer. Okay. Yeah. But I was watching him, right? And catching on to his stuff, right? But what really caught me, so he was doing these shows and he's doing giveaways and I won a prize. So uh, he sent me the prize, right? Our mailbox is up front. So my husband drives the truck up front. Yes. Picks up our mail and comes to the back. Comes in the house with the package, shuts the door. Door's right behind this, this wall. My kitchen cabinet that's over my sink. Yeah. Flew open and a jar of spaghetti sauce, thank God it was plastic and not glass. Yeah. Flew out and hit me in the thigh. Oh, his energy is not good. Oh, no kidding. Mm. Not only that, my truck broke down. I so whatever he it. gave you, did you get rid of it? Yeah, I got rid of it. Good, good. Because mm -hmm. cleansing it's it probably good. wouldn't have helped. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got it out of my house and buried it, and then I cleansed my house. Yeah, it's gone. But, you know, I, I kept watching him. I started noticing. This is something that Sloan Bella will tell you. Yeah. People that do drugs, people that use drugs, especially like meth and stuff, yeah. their soul leaves their body and allows dark energy to come in yep. and you could look at his eyes and see the dark circles i see uh, that with bk and yeah. i see that i'm starting to see that but i think there's more to the other one es 
Oh, yeah. Then there's more to him than just that because yeah. I work psych. I have a master's degree in mental health counseling and addictions. So I worked mm-hmm. psych for 17 years in hospitals. Oh, wow. He's got a diagnosis. He's par- very paranoid. Really? Oh, yeah. My mother was a drug and alcohol. That's what she retired from doing. And she's a drug and alcohol counselor for many years. Mm-hmm. I didn't do counseling. Oh, you didn't? Because that, no, that would have required me to be, um, I had to be supervised for two years and then sit and take a test to get my license. And I got hired three months after I graduated. So I never bothered to get my license. I, oh, what cool. I did was I did psyche valves. Okay. Yep. For 10 plus years. Oh, wow. Which is why I can sit and say, yes, you have this diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. It's a provisional diagnosis when I do it. Then I put you on the unit. I admit your, you to the unit. The psychiatrist does the final diagnosis. But yes. I give a preliminary di- provisional diagnosis. And my provisional diagnosis of VES is paranoid schizophrenia. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. But instead of getting help, he self-medicated. Yeah, that's unfortunately what happens most of the time. Mm-hmm. That's my my daughter. She's a heroin addict. And um, my little man, which I don't even know why I called him grandson. I've raised him. I call him my son. But anyways, um, I've had him his whole life. and He's going to be 13 next month. But his mom's an addict. And um, mm. yeah, oh, I don't want to say too much. He's in the next room. <laughs> but- All right. That's okay. Oh, well, she she was diagnosed with um, bipolar and a personality disorder. So last year she kept saying, I think I'm schizophrenic. I'm hearing and seeing things. I said, sweetie, it's the drugs. Yeah, It's the drugs. I don't think that's not you. It's the drugs. And the thing is, she's like, well, my friend who is, is, um, has this, this and happened. So I think that's me too. Well, that's your personality disorder (laughs) with the drugs, you know? Yep. So, yeah, yep. but she, she tried telling me she was schizophrenic and I did not believe it. And I'm like, no, it's as soon as she said my friend that I've been hanging around with, I, I'm like, oh, here we go. I already know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hi, Lucia. Oh, actually, I don't really I saw her thing as I can't watch BK. I don't I don't really watch him. He's oh, I can't watch too him. much, too much. Ugh, I don't know. I just can't handle it. I think you could have the potential of being good, but no, I, I can't. Except no. I did. I did watch him the other day, the first time. And I think I actually watched most of the live. Because somebody had commented that he was, um, oh, because they said that the Ernie, the FBI came there, where the feds, whatever, came for about yeah. Ernie. Ernie, is that his name? Yes, about Ernie. Yeah. Um, I tried watching him, too, and I couldn't watch him either. But anyways, and he said um, was about Ernie, not the Summer Wells case. But he was saying how three and a half weeks ago he turned in evidence that of the Summer Wells case, and he don't think the police are taking him serious. And I'm like, did anybody else pay attention to that? I know I don't know if that's the first. Actually, I think he was. I popped on just before I came live. I had ten minutes, so I popped on there, and he was basically saying the exact same thing again. And then, but I don't really watch him. I can't. I only popped on today. It was just to be nosy, see if he said anything else. Yeah, I cannot watch somebody that re- repeatedly repeats words over and over again. Like yeah. every sentence, you have to a- end it with "looking ass," or <laughs> you use that "gang gang" crap. Yeah. Yep. Can't do it. Yeah, yeah. There's another person I won't mention this female's name. Yeah. That constantly uses the word absolutely. Oh, 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 I don't even know who that is. Uh if I told you that they said they're a Christian and then five seconds later they're cussing like a sailor, would that right, help? Never mind. I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I never really watched them too. You know, I thought they were boring. I tried a couple times when I very first came, started in the community. um, I tried a couple times, and I I honestly was bored. I don't know what to tell you. So this is why I end up looking up the Silver Wells case. So I seen it originally on Facebook, 
and a couple of my friends were talking about it, posting about it. So, um, and they said they heard it from a psychic page and they'd read tarot. So, and they're talking about whatever their opinion was. I don't remember now. And I'm like, who are you talking about? And they said, such a such case. And I said, well, I want to do a reading on it to get an idea before I go and look it up. But I'm like, well, though they said it was this kid's name. I don't know anything else. So dummy me goes and looks it up and goes down the rabbit hole. And that's it. I've been here ever since is what happened. And I never did do a reading ever again because I was always worried that it was going to be washed out because I was going based on the information I heard. And I didn't want right. to wash out my reading, you know, if, if being corrupted because I would interpret it wrong. You well, know? I'll tell you what I did. Uh, it, when, if you look at my channel, if you go to my channel and you yeah. go to my playlist and you look under my playlist, you'll see missing persons. I have 111 videos on missing persons. Oh, really? Oh, over good. 40 of them, over 40 of them are on summer. Oh, wow. What I did was I sat through Sloan's video on summer and I took notes. Yeah. So what I did was I made up questions from her notes and I did readings and it's in four parts. There's four videos of questions, four video worth of questions from Sloan, the notes I took from Sloan's video. Yeah. And I did, yeah. And then the la very last reading I did on Summer was right after Dawn got arrested. I said, oh, what's really? going to happen? What is going to happen? And what I got from my reading is he's going to talk to take a plea deal, but it's not about Summer. He's going to talk about Rose. Oh, really? Oh. That's what I got in my reading. I'm not, yes. I'm not saying I'm right. But yeah. Yeah, you know that's what I got from my reading. And it's yeah, that was the wow. last video I made on summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at this point, I can't even make a conclusion. I really, I always no. think I know what happened with with her with summer, but then I always hear these other things of information. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And then I'm like, no, I don't believe that. I believe this, and I don't know. Like my, my brain is so scattered at this point that I don't know what to think or believe. I do have my own version when I think it's, it is, but it's bigger than it's bigger than any, everybody thinks. That's why I think so too. Problem. No, that's See, why I, I have the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So this, my view, my thinking is I'm like, this has affected so many people more than most missing person cases. Yeah. And I really think it's because she represents something greater also in the long run. Like, I don't know if there's going to be laws that are going to be changed or something's going to be different because something is going to come delay in this case, you know, and I think something for the greater good in the long run. I mean, unfortunately I think she's crossed over, but um, I think that, I don't know, maybe a law or maybe some rules or something's going to change because of this case. I don't know. That's just yeah. my hoping anyways, I guess. I don't know. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yep. Yeah. So but we'll the one see. I'm going to do. The one I'm going to do on Wednesday night is going to be. It's going to be tough. Very. It's going to be very tough because I've got. It's on a missing man. It was actually the first missing person case I did on my channel. And people are really biased against his wife because he was they were visiting his. Her family when he went missing. Oh. So obviously, you know, that's the person you're going to blame. Yes. But I mean, there's other circumstances and then there's fishy stuff that's been taking place from his family. So it's like, you know, I'm unbiased. I'm on yeah. his side. I'm not yeah. on him. I'm not on her family side. I'm not on his family side. I don't pick sides. Yeah. I pick yeah. the missing person side. That's whose side I'm on, the missing person. Absolutely, yeah. And I've got to be careful. I don't need anybody bashing the his wife. I don't want anybody bashing his wife in my yeah. chat. Yeah. But I don't want, at the same time, I don't want her family coming in and bashing his family. Oh. So it's going to be a very, very tough chat to deal with. Yes. And yes. I'm, I know I'm going to need more mods. I'm, pretty sure i'm gonna need more yeah, you need people to like 
get rid of them before anybody can notice them. Yeah. Oh, and wow. I've got, I'm, ex I'm waiting on a phone call from his mother-in-law, actually, right now, because she's got questions that she wants to ask me. And I oh. have spoke to her once before, before, yeah. before it turned into a drama fest, because yeah. it's a huge drama fest. It's like Summer's Case. It's a drama fest, but oh. it's not anywhere near as popular as Summer's Case. Yeah, yeah. It's more popular as a drama fest on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would suggest, though, if they come up on panel, the family, to, uh, to talk to them. There is no panel on my channel. You okay. Know why? Why? The reason I can't have a panel is because I use an independent Wi-Fi device. And so there's a lot of lag. Oh, it, it won't. Yeah, that's too much. Okay. All right. Way too much lag to oh. have a panel. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, don't let them look at the chat then, but then they're going to have no choice because they're going to have to be in yeah. the chat. Oh, boy. Yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot do a panel because I don't do it from my iPad. I do it on a laptop. Yeah. Which is, I, it doesn't have the camera. The camera is independent from the laptop. Oh, okay. So your camera it's, right now is independent from your laptop? No, I'm on my iPad right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm like, I need to figure out a way to do it from my phone because my quality... Like, look how dark it is in here. Like, the quality is not as good as if it was on my phone. Like, I told my mother before I got live, I'm like, Mom, look, my eyes look black. You can even see I got you eyeballs. Do what I do. I got a ring light. You get a oh, ring you know, light. Oh, I have cheap. a ring light. I do have a ring use light. Use your ring light. Yeah, yeah I, should. I should. I mm should. -hmm. Yeah, That's I'm like, what I, I do. Yeah, because I'm like, I want people to see me i don't know i i have this thing about looking into people's eyes to see if they're genuine and i'm like if nobody yeah. can see me i don't know so to me i feel like i'm hiding something if i if they can't right. see me i don't know that's just my old weirdoness you know <laughs> i'd show you but i don't know how to turn the camera around so you can see my husband's at the laptop right now playing a game <laughs> nice nice but see i did watch one video where it said that you do it through your laptop but um, invite yourself in through your cell phone so that way you can use that as your camera and then pay attention on the laptop. So I'm, I want to figure that out. So at least it's a clear. Yeah, picture. I don't know. I don't know. See, I don't use StreamYard. I don't use Restream. I'm not even sure what I use over there because he's the one that takes handles setting everything up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, that's good. I, I've got a channel ready to get started on my iPad. I just haven't gotten to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I, I don't know what I don't know what to call it, and if I'm depending on what I'm going to do on it, I might yeah. want to change my voice. <laughs> oh, so I need a voice changer. Yeah, right. Well, they have them out there. Mm -hmm. Do you ever you ever watch uh, Michelle After Dark? Is that her name? I've oh, she, she does a lot of the Wells case, but she, I forgot what country she lives in. She don't live around here. And she's one of those people where she doesn't take sides. So she only spits right. out the facts. So, and she might have a little bit of her opinion, but it's not, it's are just short little videos. And most of them are her walking her dogs. So you oh, watch, yeah. her, you watch her dogs running around while she spits out whatever she's going to say. But sometimes she does these little shorts where it's, it's um when she's talking, it's not her, it's a dog face. It's so funny, it's cute. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how do these people come up with this stuff to figure out this stuff? That is so cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, so when she's talking, she's a big puppy dog. But um yeah, she's one of those ones. She does a lot of research from over I forgot what country, England or something. Uh, and probably. um she does a lot of research for here for Summer Wells case. And she does a bunch of other cr true crime cases too. But right. she does the Summer Wells one almost every day. It's a short little video. And you see her walking her dogs in the trails. It's, it's cute, actually. She was a main one I always watched. I never even used to know that they used to have lives. I had no clue there was a such thing as a live until the Summer Wells case. Yeah. With you. I was mostly watching Michelle. And then the first time I seen a live, I was like, what? I don't even know. I'm well, like, I don't even I'll, know. I watch YouTube all the time. I did not know there was a live. I'll be honest with you. When I just started my channel, it was going to be strictly just tarot readings. Yeah. And I couldn't get past 33 subs. 
and I, I told my husband, I said, I got to do something different because I'm not growing. Yeah, yeah. So I decided to go on true crime. So I started on Chance Case, the man I'm going to talk about Wednesday. Yeah. And that picked up a few. And then Summer went missing. And so I started doing readings on Summer's case. Yeah. And the next thing I know, boom. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, though. Listen, I absolutely love the true Hi, Kelly. crime community. Like, <laughs> I, I think I'm a little obsessed. I watch it all day, every day. But the, the thing is, the drama, like, it's... Come on, people. Like, it's ridiculous. You know, don't you oh. guys got better things to do than fight with everybody? Oh. And when I do readings on missing persons, you know, people will make a comment under my video. Is this person still alive or not? I get that a lot, right? Yeah. I will never answer that. But I did on one case. Did on you? One, on the Cabby Petito case. Yeah. I yeah. was reading on Brian Laundry was what I was reading on. The night before they found his remains was the very one and only time you will ever hear me say yeah. he's crossed over. I oh. said he's crossed over and the next day they found his remains. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing oh, that again. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that's one I avoid. That's one question I avoid because... Like I was telling Heidi and them, I said, I don't want to be another Sylvia Brown. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to tell somebody their their missing family members crossed over and they haven't. Yes. Like Sylvia Brown. But, you know what, do I would never do it because for one, sometimes a message we get across, like I said, you don't always understand right. fully what they mean. But it depends how strong their energy too is you don't necessarily know. Well, if they're distraught and just passed on, they they might be a little confused and overwhelmed too, but right. they're energy stronger. So it's kind of hard to tell the difference. I, I mean, to me it is, I don't right. know, maybe people are that good and they can always tell. But unless I physically see the spirit itself, you know, I right. don't know. I don't like getting into it. Well, then I wouldn't want to be the bearer of bad news anyways if I did know. Right. Or like you do tarot readings, they want to know, is so-and-so going to pass away? And I'm like, yeah. I'm not answering those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. So what I will say is if I see it coming on, I'm saying, um, you know, so-and-so is not doing well, you know. Or I'll say, there's a rough time coming ahead. Just make sure you got everything in order. So just in case. And I try everything but to say it, unless they already know. If I know for a fact right. they already have an idea, I'm saying, you know, sweetie, you already know. This is what they say is going to happen. This is what you should do. You know, and then then I feel like I have permission that way, but I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. No, you know, or destiny change because it can't happen. <laughs> you know. Well, just like um, like I said, my friend was doing this the astrology readings, and she was doing Leos, and she read somebody was going to lose a family member, and yeah. sure enough, Sloan lost her son. Oh. And. That's when Jesus. Sloan started promoting um, she's my friend, and I can't even think of her. Oh, Athena. Athena. Athena's her name. Athena, Athena One Muse is her channel. Oh, yeah. okay. Athena One Muse is her channel. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. You know, because I've been Sloan. trying to look up different channels, but the channels I've been looking up are, I'm not saying this to sound mean, but a lot of them seem like they're really young. And um, so I'm not saying that they're not experienced. I mean, they could be. But so I'm always wondering if it's like on TikTok when you have all these kids saying, talking stuff about all these spells. And I'm like, boy, where the hell did I get their information from? Yeah. So that's my fear, <laughs> finding people well, on YouTube. I've been what before I had my channel, I was watching other tarot readers. Yeah. And I'd go on. And what would one thing that would turn me off was when they'd say, Oh, this card's reversed. Let me turn it upright because I don't read reverse yeah. cards. Sorry. Yeah. There's a reason yeah. it's reversed. Yes. Yeah. Another thing that turned me off, I watched another person, and I'm not mentioning names because I don't even remember the names. Yeah. Yeah. But another person was shuffling and a ton of cards flew out. Oh, that's too many. I'm not reading them. That's a message. 
that means that's a big message. Yes. <laughs> that means yeah. they they need you to know something yes. very important. So yeah. when I'm doing readings, I don't care how many yeah. cards fly out of my hands. I'm reading those cards. Yes. Yeah. I might they not like reason. to have to do it. But that's a message, and I have to do it. Yes. Because yeah. it is a message. Yeah. Yeah. That was another thing that turned me off to a lot of readers was oh. not reading reversed, not reading all the cards that flew out. Yeah. Not being able to see you shuffle the cards and pulling the cards is another yeah. thing, which is yeah. why that's all you see when you watch my channel is just my hands you don't yeah. see this see, i always right, tell so, people you want to see what i look like you have to go to another channel to see my face yes all right so th i got something to say about that so i was thinking about doing readings once in a while but that's not really what my page is about right. but i was like i don't know if i can just show my cards all right this is the reason why i have no problem seeing my cards like if i was a read for you in front of your face i mean obviously i want you to see the cards I have horrible anxiety and I'm afraid I'm going to be judged. I have horrible anxiety. So I'm always thinking, if I, what if I'm reading on there and then these people are like, no, that's not what that card means. How are you getting that message for that? So my brain has fear. Like, I don't want you to know where I'm getting this information from. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's really my anxiety, honestly. But I've been reading for many, many years. Yeah. I don't know why I would even feel that way. You know? I don't. Well. You know, on YouTube, you can set up keywords that cannot be put in chat. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, see, yeah. I, I really don't know anything about anything. So, yeah, I guess I should, if I do it, let them see the cards. And I don't know. I don't care if anybody doesn't believe because I know I see the cards because, yeah. you know, it's what you're getting. Because yeah. that happens to me a lot, okay? I watch Betty. Yeah. You know who Betty is, right? Yes. I watch yeah. her yeah. and I'll yeah. watch her reading. And she, her reading of her interpretation of the cards may be different from what I'm interpreting them as. Absolutely. But yes. I won't, I respect her enough not to say anything because that's her reading them. Yes. And that's what, that's she's what I'm getting. saying. Yeah. Yes, that's what she's getting. So that's why I tell people you have your, your tarot cards have the, the baseline meaning of them. And then your interpretation on top of that is how you read those cards. So what if I pull down a card and, you know, a cat pops in the middle of the card and that's the only vision I see in that card. Well, part of right. that message has nothing to do with that meaning of that card. It has to be whatever message that popped out, that symbolism that popped out at me. It's so that's what I'm interpreting some of it from. You know, what I'm I don't getting, know. I have horrible when anxiety. I'm reading, when I'm reading on Saturday nights, is the spirit guide telling me what to say? Yes. Yep. And it might not. You might not see. You will You may not see what I'm seeing through my spirit guide in them cards. That's what I'm saying. Like I have told people, I told one person that um, that they were going to go to jail if they didn't stop doing what they're doing and end up getting a divorce. It's one of those people that I knew you could be blunt with. And I usually tell people that before I do a reading, just so you know, I'm very blunt and I don't really hold my tongue. So whatever spirit says, I'm not good about mushing things around and making it soft baby talk for you. Like I blurted out, but um, I told this guy that some bad, something bad was going to happen. He's going to lose everything in his life. And then I turned around and said, um, are you seeing a prostitute? And he's married. He's like, how did you know that? When did you see that in his cards? I'm like, I don't know. This was years ago when I first started. I'm like, I don't know. I just got that message across. Because he's like, where do you see that in those cards? But that's what happens. That's what happens. That has yeah. nothing to do with the cards. You know, I was doing a reading for that friend of mine. I told you with the dogs. I told her she wanted me to do a reading to see how one of her dogs was doing. It did not say it in the cards. I'm like, well, your dog's going to have an illness. Um, I think there's something wrong with his belly. I said it's going to be severe and dangerous, but the dog's not going to die. It should have died, but the dog's not going to die. A couple months later, it happened. The stomach flipped, ended up having to have surgery. And the doctor said, we're surprised your dog's still alive. So she's like assisting. You got that correct, you know, but 
you don't get that from reading the cards. It's your guys that are telling you that message. You know what I'm saying? So the, the cards is you have that one message in the cards and then your guides tell you the rest, you know, but now you're, you're able to see me, right? Do yeah. you see anybody around me right now? Um, I haven't tried cause I, I haven't even tried. Okay. I, I was just curious tried. because I've had other people say, I see, you know, they've seen people around me. And no, I actually, you have a lot of people behind you, and but you have Native American people behind you. So, um, um, a long family of it, and basically that's where you got your gifts and stuff from. From, but wait a minute, you have what else are you besides Native American? I'm not Native American. No, you have Native American in you. I'm telling you, you have. No. Native, it might be. No. What are you? I are you ancestry. Irish or something? I did, I did ancestry. Yes, I have some Irish in me. Yeah, see, I'm going to say you have the family over there, too, but you have a very strong connection. I wonder if your past life, maybe you're a Native American. You have a lot or of Native it, American or ancestors. Is it because, or is it because of where I live at? Keep in mind, I'm in Wyoming. Oh, maybe. No, I don't. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah. because I have been told, yeah. Yeah, and you know, matter of fact, because the one guy has like a big hat on, like a big chief hat. And I didn't thing. tell you that. I didn't tell you that. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I never even thought of that. I assumed no, it was the old wrong. family. You're not yeah. Wrong. You're not yeah. wrong. It is. And, and then I see like some hairs, like a Celtic heritage. I can't tell if it was Irish, Scottish, or whatever. But There's I can Irish, see that. Scottish, British, yeah. German, yeah. some Russian. And yeah. very tiny bit of Swedish. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're a but mix. No, no Native American, not at all. I'm, I'm, t I guarantee you. Find somebody who knows how to do past life. Actually, it's I teach class on past life Russian. But anyways, <laughs> find somebody who knows really good about yeah. past lives. I guarantee you, you're a Native American past life. I guarantee That's it. No, that's possible. no, that's I possible. No, I guarantee. I guarantee it, and that's why I'm telling you they are family members behind you. They are. They are honestly find somebody else. Your friend that does those those uh, readings, if she can tell, ask her. I guarantee you, is her past life. I don't know anybody that does past life readings. Oh, really? Well, I don't do past life readings. I do past life regression and meditation. So you figure out yourself what you were in your past life. Right. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I honestly, I see Native America behind you and they're saying that that's mm -hmm. where you get your guts from. But the reason why I said, wait, wait, you got like Irish or something in you because they're like, no, me too. So, <laughs> so that's why I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of, Yeah. I guarantee you your past life, you're a Native American. Guarantee Ma it. My maiden name, when, when I was born, my birth name, last name, Kirkpatrick. You don't get any more Irish than that. No, you don't get any more Irish than that. Nope. <laughs> nope. I can't even say what my, I am because I have a mix. Of, so if anybody asks me, I'll say uh, French Canadian, you know, mix. But I know for a fact, because we did our family tree, I literally is a sprinkle of dust of everything, you know? Right. You know, like my I mean, father's I did the side ancestry. Is... I did my ancestry. Did and you? I don't know. Yes. I did the DNA ancestry. That's how I know there's no Native American. Oh. I'm t I guarantee you. Guarantee you look up. Past on life, too. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Past life, maybe, but not, not in this life. Yeah. No. Yeah. But your family stays with you from different lifetimes, regardless. And you guys mm -hmm. stay in each other's cycle. At least that's what I believe in. I'm not alive, so I don't want you on it. My daughter just came in through the door. She's trying to peek and <laughs> be nosy about nobody seeing her. She's almost 18, but still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my YouTube and these people, some of them are crazy. <laughs> but I think I should probably get an off because it's that time of day where, um, oh, and Justice is coming on soon. So I want to make sure I see Justice. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go so thank you, everybody, I'm for go, for coming today, and thank you for coming up. I want to come up again and have oh, you come up again welcome. and talk to you. Yeah. Okay. And share our stories, but honestly, look that up. I guarantee you, that was your yeah. past life. Don't get any closer. They're gonna see you on camera. <laughs> like, no, you're beautiful. Some evil thing. Yeah. No, you're beautiful. I just don't want people to know who my family is. Yeah. It's not their business. Yeah, There's a lot so, of creepy so, people on YouTube. I just wanted to see yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. It was a really nice lady I'm talking to. Hi. She said hi. <laughs> Which I'm surprised she was trying to creep up anyways because she's very shy. Usually she's like, no, no, I don't want nobody to see me. You know, but anyways, it was yeah. nice talking to you. I want to talk to you again. Nice talking to you too. Yeah, okay. it was nice talking to you too. Have a great night. And every, thank you everybody who popped on today. My phone I was, number's I, on my, in my about section if you ever want to. Oh, just really? Text Good. Me so I know. Just text me so and let me know who you are so I know it's you to answer. Yeah, so it's not a you know creeper, I get yeah. that car car warranty. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you. Have a great day, and thank you everybody you who came on today. And please like and subscribe to me, please. please. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Have a great day. All right. You too. <laughs>